an island in the Pacific Ocean. A territory of the United States of America. A population of 180,000. A FIFA member association since 1996. This is a national team of Guam. FIFA Football Mundial recently travelled to Myanmar, where we spent some time with the Guam national team, the Matau, during the qualifiers for the AFC Challenge Cup. Head coach Gary White has been in charge since February 2012. Guam had registered just two victories against FIFA member associations prior to the Englishman's arrival. And on numerous occasions, they've been on the end of double-digit defeats. To be honest with you, I didn't know where Guam was. Um, and then I came to Guam and had a look at the place and uh, I could see the, the drive and desire from the, the GFA executive to be competitive uh, and Richard Lai leading that as a visionary and the training facility, the National Training Centre in Guam is, is, is first class, I mean it's a five million dollar training centre that's you know with the help of FIFA and uh, I thought if we've got the infrastructure and you've got facilities and you've got players uh, there's a possibility of having success. Jason Cunliffe, who plays his club football in the Philippines, first represented Guam at youth level back in 1998. Today, he's captain of the senior side. Prior to the gaff coming in, a lot of times going into matches, it was, you know, how badly are we going to be beaten? Can we, you know, keep the scoreline down? Whereas now, it's, you see there is the belief, there is the expectation, not just amongst the boys in the dressing room, but, you know, everyone back home, like, we have to get results, and we're good enough to get those results. So, for sure, belief, uh, is a huge thing and it's, it's done a complete 180 from just only maybe two, three years ago. In their first year under White, Guam doubled their number of wins against FIFA opposition, thanks to a pair of victories over Macau and putting creditable performances against sides with huge population advantages such as Hong Kong, Chinese Taipei and the Philippines. One of Guam's stars is Ryan Guy, a 27-year-old midfielder who plays for MLS club New England Revolution. He made his debut for the Matau in 2012. When uh, Coach Gary White came into the fold and, and I saw the things that he was doing for the youth and then also the, uh, the full national team, uh, you know, I saw what a great, great opportunity it was to get in now and, and to hopefully you know, influence the future generations of Guam uh, and, and at the same time get some exposure for myself and, and my fellow teammates on Guam. And I think so far I'm, I'm really happy with that decision. White is not only head coach of the national team, he's also the Federation's technical director, roles he's previously held with the British Virgin Islands and the Bahamas. He also spent time with the Seattle Sounders before heading to Guam. He knows that long-term success can only be achieved by focusing on the next generation. Our National Academy is an elite player development program where we select the best, the best players at different age groups. Uh, and they come to us uh, during the week and they train and then they go back to their clubs and that was never, that was never in place. Uh, and it's just an opportunity for repetition of technique and that's where, that's where we've always had problems. So um, the academy is going to be uh, a huge uh, boost to the programme in years to come. When I was young, football in Guam was just growing. Now in the youth it's the biggest sport by far. Um, the league is, is huge amongst the youth. Uh, the Gaffers just recently had GFA establish a national academy for U8, U10, U12, and they just had their first uh, first class graduate, so to speak. So it's growing tremendously, and it's, it has a lot to do with just the community seeing the potential, um, and that has a large part to do with the Gaffer and the, our president, uh, Richard Lai, and the executive committee. White is also helping lay the foundations for the future by eschewing the temptation to bring in his own backroom staff, preferring instead to help develop Guamanian talent off the pitch as well as on. The coaching staff we have, you know, they've come a long way in a short period of time in turning, you know, 360 to, to a professional mindset. And we still have bumps in the roads, which we always have to uh, address, but generally the coaching staff we have is, is a very committed group of people to the programme. 
Well, the objectives are very clear. Uh, we're in East Asia, which is, you know, we go up against Japan, uh, China, North Korea, South Korea. So, you know, to sit here and say that in 10 years' time we're going to win the World Cup would be uh, a little bit uh, outrageous. Uh, so what we decided was to be uh, put a real uh, uh, attainable goal, which is to be the fifth element in East Asia. Uh, and that means right across the board, not just with the senior team, youth teams, coaching ed education, uh, everything. So, you know, our, our goal is to be the fifth strongest program in 10 years um, in, in East Asia. Having lost their opening two matches in the Challenge Cup qualifiers to host Myanmar and India, Guam took on Chinese Taipei, another side they'd never previously beaten. The Matau got off to a great start as Captain Cunliffe opened the scoring after a quarter of an hour. Into the second half and Guam doubled their advantage through striker Ian Mariano. And with a little over 10 minutes remaining, Cunliffe scored his second, completing the 3-0 win and equaling their biggest ever margin of victory over a FIFA opponent. Perhaps it could be the start of something even bigger for football in Guam. I have a wonderful president that wants it as much as I want it. So as, con as long as that attitude stays within the political realm, uh, Guam has a very, very uh, bright future. I'll give my all to the development of you know, future national programs and I see it, see it being very bright for us. Um, small population but big hearts and you know, I think that can take us a long way. An island of 180,000 people going against um, you know, cultures and societies and, and countries with a billion people. You know, that's a David versus Goliath situation and uh, you know, we'd like to think we're, we're David.